morning, everybody. Honorable dignitaries, professors, and my dear students. Firstly, I would like to thank Amity University for inviting me at the online professional skill development course as the chief guest. A special thanks and a good morning to the founder president, Dr. Shoke Chauhan, and Chancellor, Dr. Atul K. Chauhan. Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Mrs. Balvinder Shukla. And of course, my dear friend, Professor Manohar Sajnani, Dean Faculty of Hospitality and Tourism, Director Amity Institute of Travel and Tourism, Amity University. As post pandemic, the dynamics of doing business has changed completely and every business is done differently. So too, the face of travel has changed. But one thing has not changed, and that is our love for travel. How we communicate our love for travel, and specifically through travel writing, which is the theme of today's subject, has always been something that has come very naturally to almost everyone. So while travel writing has been a passion for me, and blogging and social media in today's time are essential tools to reach out to the wider audience out there in the world. I would like to speak a little bit to everyone there who's in the audience about what writing in particular, which is the base of travel writing, blogging, social media, and so on. What is writing all about? Writing in the first place, is your expression of yourself. And if you look at it, expressing yourself today is a key. When we talk about healing, when we talk about personality problems, when we talk about leadership, you know, from one end of the spectrum to the other, we are looking all the time at expression. Leadership means how do you express yourself? Healing, which is very much a part of today's world, is also expressing yourself. The moment you start to express yourself, you are beginning to be on the right path, no matter whether it is a career, no matter whether it is a personal journey, and no matter whether it is a progress for you in an ambitious career. Either way, we come to the basics, which is expression of yourself. You can do it through art, of course, painting, sculpture. However, writing through the years has been the most essential form of expression. Writing means you can leave it forever, you know, for people to read on, to get some inspiration or even just some connection. So we are talking about an instrument of expression which can become a career and which is a career for virtually everyone in the world because you express yourself through your writing. You give your examinations in writing and so on and so forth. So we coming back to the essence that writing means expression of yourself. Now, when we apply it to travel, we are applying it to the most happy part of ourselves. You know, when you travel, you are mostly a exploration, a exploration travel. You explore yourself, your destination, the work that which you have gone for, and so on. So travel on one end and writing on the other end. Just think about it. Two of the most expressive things, two of the most beautiful areas where every individual is able to flower. Okay, you can, you can actually be the best version of yourself. And here we are, you actually are able to blog. You don't have to be a master of writing. You can blog, which is self-expression. Okay. And social media today takes your message to the whole world. So what is there to stop you 
from being your best version of yourself. Nothing. Now we come to the second area, which is as a profession. Just think about it again. How do you express and how do you make this expression a, prof a profound way of developing a career? Right? Here, expression then begins to modify itself. It becomes a more disciplinary form of self-expression. You can't write when you feel like writing. You've got to write because it's your job to write. Whether you are a journalist in a newspaper or on television, or whether you have a job which you have to fulfill with X number of words for a blog, whatever it may be, then comes the formal part of writing. All right, now here we are. We have a platform of self-expression. This is your area. You can talk about it, stamp your identity on it, and then you are able to take forward a career, a fantastic career in travel writing, blogging, or in social media. So now we have the twin passions of creative thought as well as discipline. All right? Discipline means X hours a day. Discipline means ensuring that your deadlines are being met, ensuring that your SEO is in good shape, ensuring your grammar and etc. are all in place. Also, that your subject matter is topical. Here is one very important part of the discipline of writing. How topical is your article? Is it reflecting what people want at that point of time? Which means to say, if we are talking monsoon season, we need to talk about the monsoon season. If you are talking festivals, it's festival time. Similarly, if you feel that there is a pandemic, you need to talk about health, you need to talk about nutrition, you need to talk about all the things that people want to know more about. So that's how you plug in to the needs of your wider audience, all right? And so you slowly begin to understand the psychology of writing and travel writing takes you right to the heart of it. So you know what it is, what is the subject, you're in the place where you are at the destination, and you can then take forward what to eat, what to explore, what's so great about it, go and find out what people don't really know about the destination, and so on. So there you have it, travel writing, you have social media, you have blogging. You have to be a reader of the audience mind. That is what topical means. What is it that people want to know more about? If it's breaking news, well, that is something totally different because you are the first person to be on the scene to capture a travel moment or if you are in a newspaper, a news story, right? So. Travel writing could mean all of it. Travel writing in the newspaper would mean an interview, interviews with the tourism minister, interview with all the dignitaries and top guns who are going to frame policy, in which case your access in travel writing to all these people become a part of your identity. And once it becomes a part of your identity, you also become an influencer because of your reach to people who are not normally in the reach of normal people. So similarly, you will find that over a period of time, if you are dedicated to a subject, it could be food, it could be health, it could be pure travel, you know, all these ancillaries of travel. And uh, in due course of time, social media will reward you as an influencer, in which case, you not only have a profession, you not only have a job, but you also have the power 
of being able to influence other people to do this or that or to follow you and so on. So I would tell you that writing in any form and travel writing is one of the best forms because again, you are the best version of yourself. Travel takes you out of yourself. It reinvents you. You are a different person. So you can plug into these various avatars of yourself, express yourself, and at the same time, be an influencer. Have a job that gives you what you like, what you want, and take forward a passion that actually allows you to be creative in what you do, how you think, how you deliver, how you express, and how you influence others. So in brief, I think anybody there in the audience who's looking at travel writing should understand <clears throat> that he's on, he or she is onto a fabulous, an absolutely fabulous way of life. Take it up as a profession, take it up as a hobby, take it up as anything you like, but it gives you the kind of creativity and healing because writing is healing and also the power of influence that no other profession can actually give in its early days. You can start and you can become exactly who you want to be within a matter of a few years. So thank you so much. I hope the takeaways from this a short and brief session is useful to you all in various facets of life. I would again like to thank the founder president, Dr. Ashok K. Chauhan and Chancellor Dr. Atul K. Chauhan, Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Mrs. Balvinda Shukla, and of course, Professor Manohar Satnani for inviting me today for the online professional skill development course as the chief guest. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, ma'am. Indeed, listening to you for a short stint is also very pleasurable for all of us. I hope uh, your vast experience uh, is reflected in a short speech also. Uh, we have certain questions lined up, ma'am, for you. And uh, sure. since uh, the students are directly messaging us, so it is from their side we are asking you the questions. Ma'am, the first question, uh, like you said, that uh, uh, someone is, if someone is in the travel writing, they are into a fabulous uh, career option or fabulous job. Uh, they just want to know what are the niche areas for travel writing in coming years? Like if we talk about five years from now, then what are the niche areas where they can think of writing their articles? Well, um, niche areas will change, all right, will change with the mood and temperament of the people out there, and you have to be a reader of their minds, okay? That becomes very critical. So we actually can't really tell you what is going to happen one year from now, but yes, then uh, Z, the urban Indian Z, uh, traveler, that is the next millennia after the millennials, you can see that they are looking for more authentic accounts of travel. They are looking at more experiences. So one year down the line, definitely, we can say topical would be what? Topical would be your authentic self. In fact, that is what the social media boom has allowed and permitted. You can be yourself, your expression of yourself, your description, your viewpoint, and also, like I was saying, discover the unusual. That is what people will look at. That is what people will want to read. So if you're looking at niche, niche would be authenticity. Okay, real travel, not copy book travel, real travel. And what did you actually experience? And the mistakes that you made on travel, that probably would be very well received. Unlike what travel writing has been in the past, which is all gloss. Okay, 
a beautiful destination showcase. That won't be the case anymore. People want to see the real destination with all the scars. It wants to see everything about the place. So when you're looking at niche, you're going to look at authenticity, okay? Your travel experience, and it doesn't matter. Doesn't, nothing else will matter except how authentic you are. The writing can always be polished, okay? That's what sub-editors, et cetera, are there for, all right? But at the end of the day, of course, you must master your English, and you're, you're writing in a language, but then it could be any language, all right? And I think five years from now, any language in which you are good at to express yourself will be absorbed on social media across the board and translations will be available for everybody. So that is my thought process. Yes, exactly, ma'am. Uh, this is what the next question uh, from the audience is. Like you talked about the authenticity in the writing and talking about the experiences. So they they're asking one more question that uh, is it necessary to go and have the experience of all destinations before someone writes about the destination or talks about the destination? All right, uh, let me tell you something. When you're working in a job or a profession, 100% you're not traveling, all right? In which case your imagination plays a very big role in how you present a destination also your research, all right? So uh, you might be writing uh, on uh, Finland or Sri Lanka. You could be writing about uh, Rishikesh. You might not be moving out of your desk job, all right? And that is the case in, let's say, a good 70% of jobs, all right? So if you're looking at a job and then we're talking travel, destination, authenticity, authenticity will come in your self-expression. Okay, how authentic are you in your writing? Are you copy pasting people? All right, that's going to be a strict no no because nobody wants to read it. So it would be research and then your presentation of that research. So if you are writing about Darjeeling tea gardens, for example, in Darjeeling, all right, you don't have to go there. You need to collect all the information, find out all the things that most people don't know and then present it in your language. So that's how you're going to tackle when you're not traveling to a destination, but you need to write about that destination for your job. Thank you, ma'am. Well, next question which has come across is, what challenges you have faced when you joined this industry, and what are the challenges the newcomers are facing? Is there a change in the scenario, ma'am? Well, let me share with you that writing, all right, journalism, writing, okay, press, the word press, actually smooths out challenges from your paths, all right? You may be just a cub reporter, you may be just an intern, but if you have the magic press card around your neck, all right, you're hardly likely to be troubled by anybody. All right, so if women in particular, let me tell you that, I faced not a day of challenge in terms of being a lady, a woman, in a job that meant that you could go anywhere, reach anyone, find out what is happening, and uh, there you are. You are a power in yourself because you have the word press, okay? However, if you don't have a formal job with the company, all right, and you still say that you are a freelancer, press, all right? You still get the same kind of respect. You get the same kind of security, especially for women, all right? That you would otherwise not get. You just try it. Just use the word press anywhere. So, you know, everything parks and gives way to you. So, but you must not misuse it, which is uh, one of the present things that do happen. Never misuse uh, the power of the press because it becomes negative for all of us. And at the same time, be very honest. Never go after fame and glory because it is very short-lived. And the consequences are long-lived. So short-term gain, long-term pain. All right. So I would suggest 
just be your authentic self, be who you are, and be very proud of your job, what work you do, whichever work it may be, small or big. And then I don't see that people have anything that will trouble you if you are committed to doing what you like to do. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Now, uh, because we were uh, just very late, going yeah. through the going through the wiki, and uh, we found uh, so many. When I was just going through the wiki LinkedIn page, and uh, it was showing like you are pool of endless energy, ma'am, and. Uh, uh, what not the audience have written about the positivity that you spread across. So ma'am, uh, the audience, they want to know little about Wiki and how they can be, because they were we told our audience or the students that Wiki is a platform where you can actually get mentors like ma'am. So uh, why not we have a little about Wiki ma'am first, and then we'll have follow up questions on Wiki. Right. Um, let me just explain to you that uh, Wiki works mostly from inputs from others. Yes. So um, it is uh, a, a coalition or a collection of information from X, Y, or Z. You know, people who are going to add to a particular subject profile, etc. Wiki picks up information that it considers to be a good source of information. So. Uh, if you're looking uh, at Wiki, Wiki is where you can put in your own source of, you know, very, very authentic information without any promotions, right? So that is a platform which is a coalition of a lot of information. So feel welcome if you want to put it there, as, as well as what so many other, you know, uh, mediums where you can uh, put in your information, ask if you can write for them, and so on and so forth. So that you know the the social media space is completely exploding with uh, a lot of uh, areas where content is required, content is needed, and like Wiki, there would be many many social media platforms which uh, you know I I will not mention by name. But uh, all of them would be looking at content. So you need to simply reach out, ask them, can we do some content? It should be genuine content. It should, there should be no plagiarism. And uh, definitely, uh, you know, the hungry content world will ask you for more and more and more. So I think that, that there's a very, very big demand for good quality travel writing, since we are talking only travel, but writing of every kind is a very huge demand. So, you know, just think about it. You could be doing a full-time job, uh, maybe in um, as a physicist, all right? And uh, in your spare time, you could be doing creative travel writing whenever you travel. It's just your hobby. And you might be earning far more from your creative travel writing than actually your job. All right, so there, the, you know, the world is wide open. It depends how you want to tread your path. Right, ma'am. Ma'am, one more question we have uh, re related to Wiki only. Uh, like, uh, Wiki has a mentoring program. So, how long is the mentoring program, ma'am? And how do you success? How do you achieve success in mentoring female entrepreneurs? All right, uh, Wiki um, is a, a, a woman. Uh, help uh, platform in the sense that it is uh, uh, completely devoted to helping women uh, entrepreneurs in hospitality and tourism. And the mentor program is, you know, it comes with a form and the form uh, the, the, the students or the people who require help can fill in that form. And then the wiki uh, team will look at it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then put it to the right person. So if you're looking for hospitality, they will help you and put you under 
you know, depending if you've already started work or if you're an intern or if you're looking for it, they can give you a little guidelines on that. If it's tourism, they will put you in the right place. If you're looking at travel writing, they will ask you. Uh, I'm a mentor for travel writing, so perhaps they would ask me to please help with the mentorship program. So it works like that. Okay, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, uh, one question that come, has come to us, it says travel writing is an outdoor activity. And because as we we have already discussed that it requires authentic, authenticity and uh, experience. So mostly it is the outdoor activity. So what are the challenges related to travel writing when it becomes the outdoor activity, ma'am? All right. So like I said before, and I will repeat again, Travel writing is 70% at the desk, all right? So that means authenticity in how you present your subject, all right? How well your research is done, how you pick up all the lesser known information and then present it in a very readable style, okay? So it has to be far from boring. It has to be very, very straight in terms of what you want to say. Now, if you're looking at travel writing as a travel persona, that means to say you actually go to a destination and you seek out what the destination has. Now, just think about it. You talk about any destination, you talk Gujarat, you, how many people know anything about the local arts and crafts? I'll forget at Gujarat, take Chhattisgarh, take Jharkhand, take any destination, Bihar, Orissa. How many, how many of us know anything about the tribal dance, folklore? Nothing. How many of us know anything about how they do their handicrafts? We may know the final product. Okay. How do they actually do it? How do they actually make it? How many of us know about local cuisine? Where is the traditions of local cuisine? Where is it coming from? Indians want to know more. So does the world, all right? So now you want to travel, you need to be then a person who's going to explore, not just for himself, but for all his readers or her readers, explore the lesson known of that destination. We don't want to know, you know, the very obvious things, all right? We got bungee jumping, river rafting, all right, we know. What else, what else is there? Does anyone know uh, that apart from beaches of Goa, they have fabulous, fabulous retreats on the inner reserves or forests? Okay, and nobody knows about it. Nobody wants to know about it. But you've got to present it. You've got to give it. You have to find it and then present it. So that would be how you would look at the outer world. And definitely, if you are going to have a company who's going to pay for your travel, all right, it will still be um, not something which would be uh, superlative in terms of uh, where you can in accommodation. It will be all budget, 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 budget. If you are going to travel yourself and that's going to be a way of working, that also would be a budget. And the fabulous thing is budget is becoming fabulous nowadays. So again, you've got homestays which are very safe. OK, you've got budget properties which are totally safe. You may want to go with a group. You may want to go alone. Either way, you have to apply what we all know. We have to apply wherever we go, wherever we travel, which is to be intelligent. And 90% of the time, you have no problem whatsoever in doing what you want to actually do, which is presenting an authentic version of the destination if you are exploring it physically. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, now we have uh, many more questions coming up, but uh, since the time is a constraint for us, so I would have only last question for you, ma'am. Any advice to the young travel journalist or the writers from your side, ma'am, since you have a lot of a very vast experience and you know the ins and outs of this uh, profession. So any advice to the young audience who want to make career in travel writing, ma'am? Well, um, let me share with you that your writing speaks for itself. Let me tell you that as Kamal, 
And nobody knew whether I was a man or a woman. Nobody knew my age. Nobody knew anything. All right. I was, uh, my writing was accepted in very, very uh, so-called uh, intellectual and, uh, you know, very serious uh, publications uh, when I was uh, in my teens. And I had absolutely no intention of telling them my age or who I was because they would probably throw me out. All right. So uh, let me share with you that your writing comes before anything else. How do you write? All right. How do you express yourself? And like I keep repeating myself throughout this session with the Amity students, be yourself. If it doesn't matter who you are, how you think you are, what you want to look like, just don't do that. Just be yourself and do your research very well. People will come to you, all right? They're going to approach you because everybody wants good content. However, we can't wait for the mountain, okay, uh, from, to move to Mammoth. We have to go there itself, all right? So do write in to every publication where you feel it is good. Ask for internship because that helps you. It will help you to learn. It will help you to see what is being accepted, what is being rejected. What are they asking you to add? What are they telling you? When the final story comes out, what does it look like? And so on and so forth. So internship becomes very important in various, wherever you want to collect it. Then apply and be modest to begin with. Okay, you're giving me less than what I want, but okay, fine. Let me pick up some experience. So you pick up the experience wherever you can get it. All right, it doesn't, don't, don't think that only X, Y, or Z is a, you know, known name, so therefore it is going to help you. It's not really the truth, all right? Any, any product which is, in your opinion, good should be reached out to. You must take your internships there. You must try and do some writing for those and then keep moving till wherever you think it meets your financial needs. Nowadays, you know, you have so many blogs freelance work, content which is paid by the word. So in addition to your job, you know, there are many people and many companies that have got absolutely no problem with it, where in your off hours, you can sit down and, you know, bring in additional money. So, you know, that the aim is reach out, do your internships with as many publications, learn side by side, reach out, get the job that you want. It's hard work. Right. Always remember, writing as a discipline isn't just fun and games. There's a lot of work there. So many people call you kitabi kira. Okay, which is okay. There's no problem. Okay, it's what you like to do. All right. If you look at it, so is social media. All right. And they're also fixed to their cells. Okay, digital, whatever it is. That's the world of today. So no worry on that score. Reach out. Reach out to all the publishing houses that you want to reach out to and keep trying. All right. It will happen sooner rather than later.